Back on Super Talk Mississippi on this Wednesday morning, middle of the week. This is the Paul Gallo Radio Show. Richard Cross in for Paul this morning. We are live in New Albany. Uh, we've done this for a few years, right, uh, here to kick off Tallahatchie River Festival. And when we are on location, we like to try to bring you a little local flavor, let you learn some about uh, the businesses that are impacting the community, some of the success stories. And one of those success stories that is based here in New Albany is Camp Creek Native Plants. Robert Ballard, uh, Ballard is the fa- founder of this family-owned, family-run business. He's got two of his sons that, uh, that work with him and uh, some really interesting stuff. Robert, good to see you this morning. Glad to be here, Richard. I, I appreciate you coming in and, uh, and sharing your story. So that's where I'd love to start. Uh, tell, give me the story of Camp Creek. Uh, w- why you started and, oh, well, and kind of what you're doing. I don't know that you have that time. This is a long story, really. This, uh, What we're doing now really uh, uh, conceived probably 10 years ago. You okay. know, I had it on my mind. It played on my mind for quite a while. And uh, events occurred that uh, pretty well told me that this this is the time to get started with this. And okay. And uh, we got into production. My son, Andrew, and I started producing native plants. Uh, we won greenhouse. Uh, and we weren't open to the public uh, officially, you know. So it was pretty tough okay. early along. We were, we were out doing landscape work, and we were in production with native plants. And uh, uh, two years ago, we decided, well, let's, we're doing well enough to let's reinvest and uh, – Two years ago now, we built the retail center, so we are officially open. Okay. We have uh, a landscape crew that is out every day, planting somewhere every day. We're, we're uh, producing plants every day. It, it's nonstop. You know, we're either taking cuttings or divisions or doing seeds. It's, uh, it's a business that never slows down, really. And uh, we're just excited to have, especially... Uh, a son working with me that's such a privilege and now i've got two uh marshall joined us just a couple of months ago so we're we're excited about our future well marshall he, he introduced himself as well and said he listens uh in the afternoon and so i'm already a fan of his so i, yeah. I, I appreciate that yeah. uh very much uh all right so native plants I mean, I know what that means, but from a business standpoint, what does that mean as you're doing projects, uh, not just with homeowners, but with municipalities as well? That's right. Uh, well, it's uh, I explain native plants as those plants that were here, and it's kind of hard for people to get a grip on exactly what I mean by native, but they're plants that were here, uh, and, and we're faith-based. They're plants that were planted here by our creator. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of people don't understand that most of what you see in a landscape are what we refer to as exotic plants. You know, they come from other parts of the world. Okay. And the deal is that those plants really don't provide for our local ecology. Only North American native plants will raise the next generation of whatever, butterfly, bee, whatever. So that... Uh, that is really the impetus behind our business. Uh, restoring his creation is our catchphrase. So we know that we're we're getting the right plants. We're planting the plants that our creator said was right for this country, for this I, part of the area. I feel like I must have some native plants in my yard because I'm doing my heart uh, part to help keep the deer fed. Yeah, like if I put yeah. it out, the deer are eating it, and uh, it seems to work that way. Well, listen, that uh, you know that's going to go hand in hand with native plants. Yeah, they, that's what they're uh, geared to eat. So, all right, so New Albany is your home base. What are uh, not an exhaustive list, but give me an example of what are the native plants for New Albany for this particular area? Well, I'm a big, big grass fan, you know, and grasses happen to be some of the uh, more valuable plants in the landscape in a native ecology they provide so many uh, seeds it's a seed source it's a nest building source they're beautiful beautiful plants they're easily maintained so we we do a lot of work uh, using one or two or three different grass species it's sort of the matrix you know kind of dominate the landscape with grasses Mm -hmm. and then we plant the forbs or the flowering plants in amongst those things some of the common ones are 
you know, people are really familiar with purple cone flower and and black eyed Susan right. and gay feathers and that sort of thing, really familiar plants. And we always try to sneak in, especially if we're building a native scape, we, we sneak in sometimes, and that's the wrong, wrong phrase to use, but we always include those plants that are what termed host plants. Okay. And are you familiar with a host plant? Tell me more. Well, the poster child for that is like milkweed and monarch butterfly. Okay. You know, the insect is completely dependent on a certain species of plant to raise its next generation of butterflies. So we always include some host plants in whatever landscape we're doing. So you've done projects uh, just just in the last couple of weeks doing one here in New Albany. You've mm-hmm. worked in Oxford. You were telling me you've worked in, in Memphis. But when I think about cities, I think about highly manicured uh, a lot of turnover in terms of flower beds and the, the flowers that are seasonal that come in and out and, you know, the, the spillover plants and all of those. But I think I'm hearing you say this is, it, it's kind of a different landscape look. It is a more natural look it's, than uh, maybe what you think about it, on a downtown square. It's certainly a different way of thinking about landscape. We ask people to uh, think of a beautiful landscape uh, not solely from an as- aesthetic view it's not mm-hmm. just for you only you know our landscape is, is for you and it's beautiful right but it's also providing again for birds bees and butterflies that's part of our landscape and we ask you to think of a beautiful landscape including this sort of thing you know when we plant our material it's kind of like the field of dreams if you plant it they will come okay and we see a lot of that. Let me see if I can tie that. Are you kind of an outdoorsman oh, yeah. as well? All oh, right. Yeah. So, so you talk about birds a lot. There was a time when this was incredible bird hunting country. Mm-hmm. Uh, the quail population was in, uh, just outstanding in North Mississippi. Quail are almost non-existent right. in, in this part of the state anymore. This type of planning that you're talking about, is there a scenario where that quail population can regenerate? Well, that's a very good question because we've, we've lost our quail population for one very specific reason. We no longer have those meadows of native grasses mm. that we once had. And a bird species like quail are completely dependent upon that type of grass or, or grass matrix where they can build their little tunnels underneath the grasses, yeah. go unseen by by whatever and and again uh, as you probably know we we've got this invasive species called fire ant <laughs> which has been detrimental really yeah yeah i don't know that i would have have that that's interesting well young uh hatchlings are subject to being attacked by fire ants and of course we have a large coyote population well i was, was going to say have. coyotes is probably where i would have gone yeah. with, with that as well uh that's interesting because i, I feel like there's an entire generation, my, my generation, that doesn't really bird hunt. I mean, you've got duck hunters, but in terms of that traditional bird hunter that existed mm-hmm. years ago, some of my older friends that, that were bird hunters and still are. Um, yeah, quail hunting is kind of a thing of the past unless you're, unless you're doing it on, on one of these uh, quail facilities, you right. know, where they, yeah. they buy birds and release them. Yeah, uh, it's a different thing. So in terms of um, business growth, it, it sounds to me like this has been a real success story. It's hard to predict. We're still trying to predict how many plants to grow, and we failed every year in prediction <laughs> enough. <laughs> so it's so yeah, we're growing, and uh, really, uh, you know, she mentioned that uh, no one within a couple of hundred miles is doing this. So we get customers from 200 miles away. Wow. You know, it's very common for someone to drive from Jackson to our to our nursery. Uh, you can go into any nursery in Jackson, and you may find three or four of the more popular and more common native plants. Right. But if you come to Camp Creek, you you know, we're producing 370 different species really? of native plant. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. And and you're not going to the seed store and, and buying the seeds and, and coming home and planting no, them, right? No. A little bit different operation? Well, you know, it's, it is it is a different operation. You know, we, we my son, particularly Andrew, uh, in his driving around, whether he's going to and from a landscape job or what, whatever, he, he's got the eye to spot, uh, particularly prairies, 
prairie spots, prairie mm -hmm. locations. This part of the country, all the way down to Starkville and into Alabama, was tall grass prairie, and probably 50 or 60 percent of the plants we grow would be traditionally known as prairie plants. So we spot these different pockets of uh, remnant prairies, and that's where we collect our seeds. Uh, one of the biggest ones is in Tupelo. Tupelo Airport is actually built on a prairie. Oh, really? Yeah, and we've gotten access Kind of over to there close to the Buffalo Park. And Buffalo Park is a prairie. You know, it's if they would ever just let that grow, you would have buffalo. <laughs> Can we get the buffalo out of here, let it well, grow, and then maybe well, we'll bring them back? Not just that, but, uh, you know... All it would take was throw a match on it and burn it off and keep and it, let it grow low. back. It'd wow. grow back prairie. I uh, really enjoyed this conversation. Robert Ballard, he's founder of Camp Creek Native Plants based here in New Albany. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you for having me.